There are many situations described by functions where it's important to know whether within a particular interval the function is increasing or decreasing. For example, let's say we have a function that's able to describe the growth in sales for a particular product. Knowing when it's increasing or decreasing at a particular point in time could be helpful in making decisions about marketing the product. In mathematics, we define intervals of increase and decrease for a function as follows. So a function is increasing on an interval if f of x1 is less than f of x2, where x1 is less than x2 in the interval. So in this case, basically it says any point to the left is smaller, has a smaller y value than any point to the right of it. Right? Then this function, you can see here, this function is obviously increasing. And it's decreasing if any point to the left has a higher y value or f of x value as we go. So this is as we go from left to right, increasing larger y values, larger f of x. And as we go from left to right, decreasing, going down. The graph of y equals f of x shown below has a point of discontinuity at b and a vertical asymptote at d. There are intervals within which f is an increasing function, and there are intervals within which f is decreasing. Complete the table below. So here's how we're going to describe the first interval. Starts at, so we're going left to right. So we're starting at where? Negative, Negative infinity. OK, and where are we going to go to? A. OK, so if we go to A, what happens as we keep going? Does it keep doing the same thing, or does it change? It keeps doing the same thing. Keeps doing the same thing, then we're going to keep going until we get to B. On that interval, is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. increasing. So the symbol we're going to use for increasing is an up arrow. Okay. Just so we don't always have to write the word increasing or the word D. And if you want to use words, you can use your words. Do you, not, do you need to note that it's like negative infinity to A because it stalls out at A, so it's not increasing at that point? So we're still going to say it's increasing, although, yeah, at that point. But remember, it's only at that point, right? So for any point to the right of that, it actually has uh, increased. Oh, OK. OK. Uh, yeah, what's happened is the derivative at that point is 0, right? But the function is still increasing. Okay. <laughs> Slope of tangent lines. So if we draw tangent lines, are they positive or negative? Positive. They're positive, right? Uh, so we're going to we're going to do a symbol for that, which we'll use a plus sign. Is f prime of x less than zero or greater than zero? Greater than zero. Greater than zero. Yeah, positive. Because what is f prime of x? The slope of the tangent line. What do we know about the slope? They're positive. So in here, here's the shortcut. We're not going to use the shortcut. We're going to say f prime of x is greater than 0 in that interval. OK, next interval, what's happening from b to c? b to c. OK. Now, they're open parentheses, right? They don't include b, because it's point of discontinuity, and they don't include c. Uh, is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. It's increasing. What are the slopes? And what can we say about f prime of x? Greater than zero. Okay, from c to shining c, c to d. What's happening from c to d? Decreasing slopes. F prime of x. Negative. I mean, this is just another, you know, there's two ways of saying the same thing, right? These slopes are. Uh, and from D to C. Oh, E. <laughs> Let's go D to E. Okay, because then what time is changing direction, right? I think we might have to squish a line in here at the bottom that's not there. From D to E, what's going on? Decreasing. Decreasing. Negative. negative. Prime of X is less than zero. Perfect. From. E to, uh, but, yeah, what's happening at G? Nothing important, Nothing important except the derivative 
doesn't exist. Oh. Right? At a kink, the derivative doesn't exist. So we can't really say, I can't go e to g, or am I going e to g? Sorry. Can't go, can't go e to positive infinity because at g, the derivative doesn't exist, right? So we got to say in the interval from e to g, not including g, nor e. So from e to g, it is? vertical line upon which I shall put an arrow increasing. Which means that the tangent line has a slope which is? And f prime of x is? Okay, and then from g to from g to shining g, from g to infinity, what's happening? It increases. It's positive, and that's prime of x is greater than zero. Perfect. So, as always, when a graph of a function is provided, it's relatively simple to determine the intervals of increase and decrease, right? Yeah. And you're responsible for knowing this even out of the, the unit we just finished on derivatives, right? By looking at that function, you should be able to tell stuff about the derivatives, just as we have told there. To determine intervals of increase and decrease for a function when the graph is not known, we need to the derivative. We need to the derivative. We need to edit. The, yeah, we need to find the derivative. Does that say that on yours as well? Yeah. Okay. We need to find, and you know, I think uh, the graph might be two words. We need to find, or or maybe determine. Let's be more determined in our finding. We need to determine the derivative of the function. Compare the second and fourth columns in the table complete below. So if f prime of x is greater than 0 for all x in an interval, then f is If f prime of x is greater than 0, then f is yeah, it's positive because we just said it was positive. Then it's increasing. Yeah, I know. But yeah. You've got, to be, you've got to be louder than Peter. If f prime of x is less than 0, I know that some work. For all x in interval, then f is? Also increasing. Yeah. However, this is what your mark will be doing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a negative thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, what happens is f, if f prime of x equals 0? Right? So if you're at 0, we've got some situation. Well, that depends. The graphs below show some possibilities. So f prime of x is equal to 0 for all x in an interval from... Oh, sorry. So if, if this is happening, if we have an interval where the derivative is zero, what's happening in this interval? Is it increasing or decreasing? Neither. Neither, right? So it's neither increasing nor decreasing. So neither, it's constanting. So if the derivative is zero, then we may not be increasing or decreasing, but the function itself still exists, right? But the derivative is zero. If the derivative is 0, so if f prime at c is equal to 0 for some x is equal to c, then what's happening? Uh, that's just like the end of an interval. Okay, so it's changing from increasing to decreasing. So it's so we know the derivative is 0 here and here. So it's changing from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing, right? So there's a change of direction. So we would say f of x is changing from, so if we know the derivative is 0, then we know that, well, it might just be going flat, neither increasing nor decreasing, or it's changing from increasing to decreasing, increasing to decreasing, Or it's changing from decreasing to increasing, right? Or decreasing to increasing. 
Okay. Or, so what's happening here? So at that point, it's become zero. But we would say the function is still doing what? It's still increasing, right? So if your derivative is zero, then yeah, maybe you're flattened out. Or maybe you're changing direction from increasing to decreasing. Or maybe you're just still increasing. So we're going to say f of x is increasing on the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? It's just always increasing, although at that one moment, the derivative happens to be zero. But any point to the right of that point is greater, and any point to the left of that point is lesser. So when a function is cute, then it does like that thing. Yeah. It's actually never straight. It's actually just actually it, going it, up. It's actually really it, well, we would say it's always increasing. So these are both qubits, right? Yeah. So this is a qubit where we actually are changing direction uh, from increasing to decreasing, and this is a qubit where we have, did, you know what that's called, that point? Point of inflection. Point of inflection. Yeah, point of inflection. But the, the thing itself, the, the function itself, is still an increasing function, right? By the definition of any point on the left of any given point is smaller. But at that point, the slope of the tangent line is zero. So the slope of the tangent line is zero. We may be just flattened out for a while, right? Constant, it's horizontal, maybe it's zero then horizontal. Or you're changing direction, you're going from increasing to decreasing, or from a decreasing to an increasing, or you have a point of inflection. Yeah. So what about like if the first graph existed like it did, where it went up and it plateaued, but yep. then it went up again, would you need to denote that or could you just say that it's constantly increasing? Uh, well, we would say at that point it's neither increasing nor decreasing, okay. but then, right, because any point to the left of that point would still would be constant, right? So, so within that interval, we would have to say the function okay, is not so increasing. Do you know that right? a yeah. So, well, you'll have to know, right? Because, so, I mean, you know, the reason we're doing this is without tech, how can we sketch the curve? How can we know what's going on here? And it's by understanding, okay, so if the derivative is zero, we know one of these three things is happening. Right. Either we have plateau, we are at a constant, right? The, the car has stopped moving or whatever. Or we are changing direction, right? So we know that we have a horizontal tangent at that point. Or it's just a point of inflection and the function is still increasing on the interval. So here, function is neither increasing nor decreasing. Here, it's changing from increasing to de decreasing or vice versa. And here, it's still increasing on that interval. What happens if f prime of x does not exist? So if the derivative just, you know, derivatives could be zero, right? We know, okay, what happened? Well, the tangent at that point is a horizontal line. Or derivatives don't exist. Well, why not? Well, the function is discontinuous, right? So in A, well, there is no A here, but if there were an A, okay, so if I say, all right, and at this point the derivative doesn't exist, so what happens? Well. We know that from negative infinity to, so what's going on in this particular thing here, right? We have decreasing, increasing, increasing, decreasing, right? So we have two intervals of increase and two intervals of decrease, right? So let's say f of x is increasing. Okay, and let's do it left to right. So as we go from left to right, what is the where is the first interval of increase from where to where? From zero to one. So it's increasing on the interval zero to one. Where else is it increasing? From one to two. Okay, how are we going to say that? We are going to unite. Intervals of increase unite. So we'll take the union of those two, right? So anywhere that x is between 0 and 1, not including 0 nor 1, or between 1 and 2, not including 1, because the derivative doesn't exist there, right? Derivative exists here, right, and it's 0. Derivative doesn't exist here, okay? Why not? Well, again, we've got an asymptote, or we've got a kink, or we've got a, right? Like, what causes derivatives not to exist? And f of x is decreasing. From negative infinity 
Well, I wouldn't go to one. I wouldn't want to overlap that with an interval of increase because you can't do both. Yeah. So from negative infinity to zero, my infinity didn't go sideways there. So from negative infinity to zero, how do you say that? That's or, right? Or, or is that and? Union. Union is or, right? Or, yeah, because it's this, or it can't be both. Yeah, if we said and, then it wouldn't exist. It's from zero to one and from one, there are no numbers, that, so it's or. Okay, or from where? Decreasing. Two to, infinity. Two to infinity. So there are way more values in between here than here. So not true. There's infinitely many values from here to here as well as here. Some infinities are bigger than other infinities. But those are both countable infinities, so I don't know if they're, yeah. There are, there are levels of infinity. Talk to Georg Kenter. Okay, so here, why is it not, uh, why, why does the derivative not exist? Point discontinuity, right? So here, derivative doesn't exist as we an asymptote. Here it's a point discontinuity. And we'll write them up here because it's like, well, we're just going to give the intervals of increase and decrease. Okay, so what's the interval of increase? Negative 1 to infinity. Where else? Trick question. Nowhere else, right? That's, that's it. Where is it decreasing? Where am I going to write this? Okay, so f of x is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 1, right? Okay, so we're decreasing on one interval, we're increasing on another. Uh, here. Derivative doesn't exist because the function doesn't exist. So what are we going to say about uh, this? What's happening? On what? It, where, where is it increasing? Nowhere. Nowhere. So we're just not going to write that down, right? So what are we going to say? F of x is decreasing. Where? Negative infinity to 3. Negative, in, nice, negative. negative infinity to 3 and a parenthesis, not a bracket, right? Because it doesn't include three. Okay. Well, why else might a derivative not exist? It could be a kink in the graph, right? Okay. So where is this increasing? From four to infinity. And where is it decreasing? Negative infinity to 4, exactly. Man, I just not am drawing. OK, why else might the derivative not exist? Yet another asymptote, but in this case, they're both going the same way, right? So where is it increasing? So ultimately, our, our answers to this question are going to be, the question will be, what are the intervals of increase and decrease? And so you will say f of x or g of x. The function is increasing on and gives some interval, and decreasing on and gives some interval. So what was that? Negative infinity to 1, and f of x is decreasing from 1 to infinity. And what else? Well, this is like this discontinuity here, except where what's going on with this function? It's just. Yeah, that's right. We, we have to leave out two, right? Because the derivative doesn't exist. So we need to see when we're doing curve sketching. We need to look at the first derivative, and we need to say, well, if it's 0, then it plateaued, or it's changing direction from increasing to decreasing, or, uh, what's the third one? Uh, or, look back at the top of the page, or, or it's a point of inflection, yeah. right? If the derivative does not exist, then why does it not exist? Well, there's a kink, or there's an asymptote, or there's a discontinuity. So we're going to say f of x is increasing. 
uh, from negative infinity to to two. It's not getting it from negative infinity to two union. Okay. Two to infinity, right? But not including the two because at that point the derivative does not exist, right? Okay. As always, everything seems easy if the graph. So if you're looking at the graph, that's pretty right. We're just looking to say it's going up, it's going down. It's what to do if the graphs are not known? Let's do some examples. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So here's the question, right? This is what you're going to get. You don't have graphing software. And even if you do have graphing software, sometimes something's happening in a really small interval that you're not looking at, right? Or you don't see because of the scale of your graph. So that's why we don't just always want to rely on software, you know, be it Desmos or uh, graphing on your calculator because the scale that I set it at might mean that I miss something, which I won't miss if I do the analysis that we're about to start with, right? So, uh, here's the function. What do we want to find? We want to find the derivative of the function, right? So, what's p prime at x equal to? So, you try this. Good practice for tomorrow, finding derivatives. So we've got the first derivative. What do we need to know about this? Well, we need to know when is it zero, because stuff's happening around zero, or when does it not exist? So I can factor a 12x out of there, right? And what do I get? x squared minus x minus 2. And I can factor x squared minus x minus 2. Plus one. Yeah. Yeah, for tomorrow, all you gotta do is the first line of that, right? We're just interested. What's the derivative? Okay. So we know that p prime of x, so the derivative, is equal to zero if what? What can x be to make this zero? Zero. Two, negative one. Okay. So something's happening on this graph, right? I mean, we, we kind of already know. We know it's a fourth degree, so yeah, and it opens up and blah blah. But, but something's happening, right? The derivative is zero at those points. So what we want to do is an interval analysis, right? So here's how we're going to set this up. We're going to set up a little table. I'm going to set a number line on this table. Just go a little bit lower. So going from left to right, we have something's happening at negative 1, something's happening at 0, something's happening at 2. So we have three places where the first derivative is 0, giving us four intervals on the number line, right? Below negative 1, between negative 1 and 0, between 0 and 2, and above 2. And we're going to look at the factors of the derivative. So we're going to say, okay, we've got 12x, we've got uh, x plus 1, and we've got x minus 2. Right, now what we're looking for is, so what's the sign of the first derivative, right? Is it positive or is it negative? If it's positive, that'll tell me what the function is doing in that interval. Right? If it's positive, we know in that interval it's increasing. If it's negative, we know in that interval it's decreasing. So we're going to look at taking these factors, figuring out in each interval whether they're positive or negative, putting that together to say, all right, then p prime of x, the derivative, 
is going to have a particular sign, and then the function is going to have some behavior in that interval. All right, so what we want to do is go through, remember this in 20, you didn't do anything of this in 30 dash. Did you do anything of this in 30 dash one? No, okay, so in 20 dash one, there was a day where we almost sort of did some stuff like this, right? And there was, it was with quadratics, and we were looking at case analysis or oh, sign right. analysis, right? Yeah. Okay, and then we said, ah, just forget it, because really it's a quadratic, it opens up or down, you can just graph it, you got the zeros, you'll figure out what's going on, right? Okay, this is more complicated, so we need to go through it step by step. Okay, so if you are below negative 1, then 12 times some number below negative 1 is negative, right? Between 0 and 1, negative 1, 12 times a number is negative. Between 0 and 2, it will be, and above 2, it will be Okay, and so we want to do that for x plus 1, so I'll give you a moment. So look through and say, all right, so if I add 1 to a number that's less than negative 1, I'm going to be, and if I subtract 2 from a number which is, well, that'll be, Okay. So you just say, I've taken a number in the interval. So you can just take a number and just say, okay, like, look, negative 10. 12 times negative 10 is negative 120. Negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9, so it's negative. Take a number between 0 and negative 1. Negative 1 half, so x plus, negative 1 half plus 1 will be positive, right? Okay, so we got this. So far, so good? Okay, so if... This factor is negative, and this factor is negative, and this factor is negative. So if I multiply together three negative factors, what do I get? I get a negative. If the first derivative is negative, then the function is decreasing, down arrow. If I have a negative times a positive times a negative, then I get a it, it's a pegative or a nosative. I'm just not sure. If the first derivative is positive, then the function is increasing. It does look like half of that sign is negative, though, so it's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Two pluses and a minus make a And on that interval, then the function will be and three positives. Are you sure? Okay. Now, this kind of matches up with what we think a fourth degree function that has, whose derivative, you know, a fourth degree function is going to open up in some interval both to the extreme right and to the extreme left. Okay. Except, wait, what's happening there? It's decreasing. Okay. That seems kind of weird. Hmm, it's interesting. All right, so what would we say about P of X? Where is it increasing? So we want to make two statements, right? P of X is increasing. P of X is increasing. On which intervals? Oh, hang on. So it's increasing. P of X is increasing from negative 1 to 0. And where else? Two to infinity. Two to infinity. And P of X is decreasing. The rest of the time, no? And we need to describe the rest of the time. So from negative infinity to negative one. Negative infinity to negative one. And Zero to two. Zero to two. Okay. <coughs> so that's basically what we're doing, right? We take a function, we take its derivative, we look at the derivative and we say, stuff's going to happen when you're zero or when you don't exist. Things are going on. So we need to look at the first derivative and say, when is zero? In this case, just zero, right? That's just a, a polynomial. So there's no, doesn't exist, right? 
and we know if it doesn't exist, well, it could be an asymptote, and then it could be could be increasing on both sides, right? That'll tell us how do you sketch this curve. Well, if I know it's increasing on both sides, and I'm doing this. If I know it's increasing from here to here, but decreasing there, and the derivative doesn't exist, then I know I've got an asymptote, and the curve is going to look like this, right? Which, if you're watching the video, is like a bunch of hand waving is going on here, but nothing like that. Okay. Uh, so in this case, just look at where the first derivative is zero, and then do an interval analysis, right? What's happening in this interval, right? What did we know from looking at the other stuff? Well, we know that the first derivative is negative or positive. If it's negative, it's decreasing. If it's positive, it's increasing. Determine the intervals of increase and decrease for q of x is x squared over 1 minus x. All right, good practice. Work out q prime of x, right? Because you got to do this tomorrow. Okay, so this is practice for tomorrow, then the rest of it is you know, to be saved for the next uh, quiz. Every time I do one of these, I'm just doing the basic. I'm not going to get fancy, right? It's f of x times g prime of x minus g of x, or sorry, uh, it's g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x over g squared. Okay, now we want to work this a bit. 2x minus 2x squared plus x squared. Uh, negative x, so wait, okay, so let's say we do, no, oh, hang on, that could be built, yeah, okay, So we've got negative 2 times x times x minus 1 over 1 minus x squared. Okay, and if you kind of back that up a bit, I'll have a negative 2x squared and a positive 2x. So wait a sec. No, that's not, no, no, that's no, not right. That's not right. That's not right. Uh, should have done another line in here, right? Sometimes you try and do too much. So we've got 2x minus x squared over 1 minus x squared. Okay, take a negative x. So x minus 2. Okay. Or you could take an x times uh, 2 minus x. Okay. It's not going to matter. So, two things. We need to know when is this derivative? Is this q? So q prime of x equals 0 when what? x is 0, or x is 2. Okay, so that means that x equals 0, or x equals 2. Uh, Q prime of x, could it not exist? So does not exist, where? When x equals 1, right? Stick a 1 in there, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 squared, dividing by 0. Okay, so we know stuff is happening when x is 1, Right, x equals 1. So stuff is happening when x is 0. Right? So we look back and we say, well, what, what could be happening when the first derivative is 0? Right? So it could flatten out, could have a point of inflection, uh, could have a, whatever the third thing was. And when it doesn't exist, stuff is happening. So we're going to take our number line and we're going to split it out. Okay, so we're going to say, okay, what do we got? Three numbers, right? You call these like critical numbers, right? Stuff is happening at 0, at 1, and at 2. 
So that gives me four intervals, right? Less than zero, between zero and one, between one and two, and between two and infinity, where some things happen, okay? And we gotta figure out what, and then we'll describe it. So we're gonna take each of our factors. So I have a factor of negative one, okay? That negative, that's a factor of negative one. Its sign is easy, because wherever it is, it's going to be negative, right? I've got a factor of x. Well, below 0, it's negative, and otherwise, it's positive. Okay, We've got to deal with the negative 1. So if I had factored that as x bracket 2 minus x, I wouldn't have to deal with the negative 1. Wouldn't it just be easier to do it as negative x? Uh, yeah, don't. It's just, just I know, don't. Since there's two yeah, I know. It just it's, it's easier not to. Uh, okay, we've got what else? An x minus two. I made no mistakes. Oh, I don't think that was yeah. You're right. It won't make a difference, and I'm not going to ding you for it unless you actually make a mistake in it. But So we have a factor of x minus 2 that's going to be subtracting 2 from something which is already negative, and I'm subtracting 2 and I'm subtracting 2. Okay. And I've got a factor of 1 minus x quantity squared. And if I'm squaring something, then it's always going to be positive, right? Right. You're squaring so it doesn't matter what it is, right? No matter what value x has, whether I end up with a positive or negative in the brackets, I'm going to square it. It's going to be positive. I? Yeah, I don't think we use i. So. I think not. All right, so deal with all of the factors, right? And the way that I factored it, negative 1 is a factor. x is a factor. x minus 2 is a factor. 1 minus x, quantity squared, is a factor. So now we know that, okay, if I have a negative here and, you know, depending on the signs of these guys, the whole thing is going to work out either negative or positive, right? So we're going to say Q prime of X, which leads to Q of X being, okay, so Q prime of X here will be negative, right? Q prime of X here will be positive. positive. Q prime of x here is positive. And Q prime of x here is negative. negative. There you go. And then fill in your Q of x, right? So Q of x is either up arrow, down arrow, right? It's either increasing. So it's decreasing, increasing, increasing, and decreasing. Okay, so here's what we know, right? I mean, if you're looking at this, we know that when x is equal to 1, we've got an asymptote, and on both sides of that, it's increasing, right? So when we go to sketch, if I just said, hey, we, we just look at this and say, there's an asymptote when x equals 1. This we know. But we don't know if we've got this, right? One up, one down. This, the other one up and the other one down. Or this, but now we know. If it's increasing on both sides, then we know we're dealing with this, right? So when we go to sketch that curve or look at that curve, we're saying, hey, I know what's happening when x is 1, right? I know I've got an asymptote, and I know that on either side of that asymptote, the curve is going up. Okay, so now we state q of x is increasing. On the interval, and I always take it off the top there. A little off the top. So from 0 to 1. And from 1 to 2. And Q of X is decreasing. From negative infinity to 0. And from 2 to infinity. Okay? Yeah. I'll just flip it on its side. Just make it a very big Okay, so if you go graph this, you're going to know what's going on, right? right? Or if you want to sketch the graph of this, you can. So this unit is called curve sketching, right? And did they put example three at the top of the next page? Or no. Wow, okay, so 
Nice. I guess we're just going to have to extend the page. Well, I have to extend the page. You don't. Determine the intervals of increase and decrease for g of x is e to the 2x plus e to the negative x. Okay, here's a good practice for tomorrow. Figure out g prime of x. Short, snappy question on the test, right? Because I mean, there's not much to it, right? You're just pretty much writing it out. It's not big calculations or anything. Could be a multiple choice, and which gives you four little choices, right? But again, not much work involved in doing this. And what we want to do, right? Because we got to figure out, well, okay, when is this? So we want to write in a factored form. So we take the lowest power of e, which is negative x, and we take that out. So this is 2e to the 3x minus 1. Okay. So again, now maybe that's the form it's written in. Okay. I think if you're doing the derivative and you leave it in the first form, that's fine, right? But maybe that's the form it's written in. So g prime of x is equal to 0. Well, if e to the negative x is equal to 0, it's a way to say maybe we should write it this way. So let's go 2e to the 3x minus 1 over e to the x. Okay, that makes it a bit easier, right? So g to the x will be 0 if 2 to the 3x minus 1 is 0, right? If the numerator is 0. So g prime of x equals 0 means that 2 times e to the 3x minus 1 is equal to 0, which means 2 times e to the 3x is equal to 1, which means e to the 3x is equal to 1 half. And we will change that from exponential form to logarithmic form. Right. So my exponent is 3x. So 3x is equal to, my base is e, so I'm going to write ln, right, which is the, okay, and the value of which we are, you know, when we raise, so e, e to the 3x equals a half, right? So just change from exponential form, so ln, which is a log base e, so my base is e, the exponent is 3x, and the value we get is a half, right? So x is one third of that, right? So x is equal to uh, ln of 1 half times 1 third. I'm going to extend the page again. So x is equal to, hang on. So 3x, so x is equal to 1 third ln of 1 half. So x is equal to the ln of 1 half to the power of one third, right? Because we could take the number in front of the ln and write that as a power. Okay, so x is equal to ln of one half to the power of one third. Um, can e to the x be zero? No. No. So there's nowhere this is undefined, right? Because what are we interested in, right? Critical numbers. We're going to call them, at some point, we're going to call them critical numbers, right? Which is where the derivative is zero or it does not exist, okay? Which just goes back to the first few pages of this. When it's zero, we know this is happening. When it doesn't exist, we know it could be one of these situations. Um, if you wrote the final answer is x plus one third, so long, what half would you get by mark off or no? Well, you know, what is, you know, like, without a calculator, you can't actually work that out, right? But, so that, that's our, our number, right? We're, we're going to split the number line into two intervals. That would, because at this point it's zero, right? So to the left of it, it has some one sign, and to the right of it, it has another sign. I mean, like, if you did either or, like, yeah. Oh, like one third long, yeah. one half? Or? Yeah, I, I'd like to see this, right? And more importantly, I guess, I'd like you to know that this is this in case you see it as a multiple choice answer and. You know, it's like, where's the third? Oh, right, yeah, it could be, you know, a power, so. 
<laughs> they'd like to see that. I don't, you know, could possibly take a half mile. Yeah. Does it G prime of x positive like that? Uh, no, the negative on here doesn't make, I still need, so if I multiply these two together, I get 2e to the 3x plus negative x. So you mean is the derivative of that plus? No, the initial Yeah, that's plus. Okay, then, then the, so the, the, this is good though, right? You won't get this wrong tomorrow. So if you see, if you take in the derivative of e to the negative x, it is e to the negative x times negative 1, right? Now you can write that if you like, or you can just sort of say, eh, I'm just going to put the minus here. right? Just like, the, so for the first one, right? Before I would have written, it's e to the 2x times 2. And I'm to the point now where I'm just saying, okay, I'm just going to write 2e to the 2x, right? I'm not going to show it as e to the 2x times 2. And I'm not going to show this as e to the negative x times negative 1. Okay, so we go up here. We draw this, and we have an interval. We have one interval here, which is at ln 1 half to the 1 third. Right? And we're splitting the number line into two intervals, one to the left of that and one to the right of that. And the factors we have, okay, so we've got two factors, right? We've got 2 e to the 3x minus 1. And we've got e to the x. The signs of those will determine the sign of g prime of x. And the sign of g prime of x will tell us whether on that interval we are increasing or decreasing. OK. So 2 to the 3x minus 1 will be what in this interval below here? If this is 0, or maybe you just want to go with this, right? It's like, let's throw in a number like 10,000. This is going to be e to some really huge number times 2, and I subtract 1. That's likely going to be positive. Okay, and what's going to happen if we throw some small number in here that's less than that? Well, then this is likely going to be a very small number from which we subtract 1 and end up with a negative. And what can we say about e to the x regardless? It's always positive. It's always positive. So g prime of x will be negative to the left of the ln of 1 half to the 1 third and positive to the right. So g of x is... In this interval, decreasing, and in this interval, increasing. Right? And so I think drawing the arrow is just a visual cue to you that when I'm drawing the function there, it needs to be going down, right? Like it needs to be decreasing. So instead of saying decreasing, you know, by using the arrow, you're looking at it saying, okay, it's going down, right? Or it's going up. All right, so final thing we say is g of x is increasing. On what interval? And g of x is decreasing on the interval from Determine the intervals of increase and decrease for f of x is equal to 2 sine x plus x. Work out f prime of x. but it's really too easy to really ask you to do that. So it's just 2 cos x plus 1. OK, so if f prime of x is equal to 0, that means that 2 cos x plus 1 is equal to 0. So 2 cos x is negative 1, 
and cos x is negative one half. So when is cos x negative one half? Yeah, you're two pi over three and and four pi over three. Okay, so basically in this interval here. So if we start at 0 and we go around to 2 pi, uh, OK, so we got this, we got this, OK, let's go that. So we got 0. From 0 to 2 pi over 3, from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, from 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi. And I'm going to throw one more in. Okay. So we want to look at the interval from here to here, from here to here, from here back to here. Okay. And then let's go to 8 pi over 3, which is just continuing back around. Because the thing's actually happening here is we know that it's going to be working on a period of 2 pi, right? So when we come up with an answer, now a lot of times these things might say determine the intervals of increase and decrease on, and they'll give you an interval, right? They'll just say from here to here. Okay, and in this case, not so much. So here's how we're going to handle that. Okay, so we have. Uh, what do we have? We have one factor, right? Just 2 cos x plus 1. That factor is just going to determine the sign of f prime of x, which is going to determine what's happening with f of x. So, uh, you know, wait a second. Uh, okay, Let, let's not worry about what's happening in that interval, right? Because we've wrapped around it on the other side, so we'll go on the other side. So from 0 to 2 pi over 3, what's happening with 2 cos x uh, plus 1? It's going to be positive, right? I mean, from 0 to pi over 2, it's positive. It doesn't hit negative 1 until 2 pi over 3. So from here to here, we're going to be positive. From 2 pi over 3, when it hits negative 1, down to here, we are going to be negative. Okay, and you just take you could take pi and stick it in there, right? Because that's in the interval. And the two, so the cos of pi is what's the cos of pi? It's a cos of pi. It's a pi over two. It's like one. negative one, right? So then we end up with uh, negative two plus one would be negative. As we go from four pi over three down to zero, well, we know that cosines are positive here, and it's uh, one half there, right? So this will be positive. And from 2 pi back over, it'll be positive. Yeah, again, we're into positive stuff. And then from 8 pi over 3, that'll be negative again, right? 8 pi over 3 is just 2 pi over 3, right? I mean, they're co terminal. Yeah. How is cos? Uh, one half, negative one half when it's two pi over three, it's going to be three pi over four. Well, no, cos is one half at pi over three. Right? So, so, but if it's negative one at pi, and then you can be like halfway there, it's going to be three pi over four. Well, it's okay. Just directly down. Good unit circle. Yeah, you have to yeah. use your unit circle. So the way I use unit circles, I always work out of the first quadrant, and then I use the, the sign, right, the cast rule. So first quadrant, so where, when, so forget negative a half. When is cos of x a half at pi over 3? When is it negative a half? When I have a reference angle of pi over 3 in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3, which gives me 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Right. So I get a reference angle here of pi over 3, here and here, right? And Castro will see a 
Yes. T. Okay. So cos is negative yeah. in here. Yeah. Okay. So okay. when is it negative a half here and here? Okay. From here to here, this expression will be negative. From here to here, it's positive. Okay, so we have one interval of negative, one interval of positive, right? We're kind of evaluating a bit more of this. So f prime of x is just the sine of f of x, right? I mean, because there's no other factors. So we are increasing, decreasing, increasing, increasing, decreasing. So now if we look at this, we'll say f of x is increasing. So it's increasing from here to here. So we're going to call this negative 2 pi over 3, right? It's just a coterminal angle. So we say, hey, if you're going from negative 2 pi over 3 to positive 2 pi over 3, you're going to be positive. Okay? So f of x is increasing. In the interval from negative 2 pi over 3 plus 2n pi, right, anything that's coterminal with that, to positive 2 pi over 3 plus 2n pi. Man, where is the problem? Yeah, where? Because I'm also going to say f of x is decreasing. from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, right? So 2 pi over 3 plus 2n pi to 4 pi over 3 plus 2n pi. Where for all of this, n is an integer, right? Just having run this together. But, but whether it's increasing or decreasing, the n's need to be any integer. Okay, so that's kind of how we're looking at this is rather just doing sort of a, okay, you know, where do I start? Well, you're really starting here to here and you're negative in here. Uh, okay, do g prime of x. This will be a much more fun one to do. Okay, and you want it in a factored form, right? So work this through to a nice factored form. It may take a bit of room, he says, starting closer to the edge. Washing things in.
pull you that top expression. <laughs> So now you see why sometimes when we do derivatives, we go into a fully factored form, right? We actually need that if we're going to do curve sketching. We need to get it into a factored form. So we can then do the sign analysis given each factor, right? As soon as we find the intervals. <laughs> Okay, so wait. So are we there yet? Are you there yet? Uh, okay. Well, I mean, if not, th there it is. All right, so uh, when is, okay, critical numbers, right? When g prime of x is equal to zero. So g prime of x is equal to zero when? What are we looking? Numerator or denominator? Numerator. Just the numerator, right? So negative two thirds and negative two. And g prime of x does not exist when you know, or you can say it's undefined. But when what? Uh, when x is equal to or less than negative 2. Okay, so first off, so x equals 2 is going to be a problem because that'll give you a 0 here, right? Yeah. So it won't exist when x is 2. But g prime of x itself only exists when x is greater than or equal to negative 2, right? Because the thing, the expression under the root sign. So when we go to do the interval, okay, we're going to start at negative 2, right? We're not going to look to the left of negative 2. Okay, so we're going to start at negative 2, right? Because g prime of x doesn't exist there to the left. And what are our other numbers? So we've got uh, negative 2 thirds and negative 2. Okay, so negative two thirds. Okay, wait. Uh, and we've got positive two, right? Where it doesn't exist, so positive two. So we have three intervals, right? We're not looking to the left of negative two. Okay, it doesn't exist. So we're looking from negative two to negative two thirds, from negative two thirds to positive two, and from positive two beyond. And factors. Okay, so we've got negative one. Why, why doesn't it exist at two? Uh, two squared is four, minus four is zero, squared is zero. Oh, okay. Would it not exist at negative two either? Yeah, it doesn't exist in negative two, and it doesn't exist to the left of negative two, right? So that's why our left boundary is negative two, right? Like, we're not looking to the left of negative two, right? Uh, otherwise, I'd put this blank here and say negative 2 to negative infinity, but no. So we're just looking to the right of negative 2 between, doesn't exist here, but we're not looking there. Uh, so when we do our intervals, it's going to be increasing, you know, increase, increase, decrease, whatever. Okay. We don't know yet. So why do you write negative 1 as a factor by itself? When before we had negative x, this is why. 
Yeah. Okay, because negative one is a factor. So let's just get in the habit of if I did, if I chose to factor a negative, and maybe I shouldn't have in the last one, right? Like I might have been better off just going with two minus x instead of x minus two. I just like x plus or minus something better than I like two minus x. So, but here, so we need that negative one as a factor. We need the three x plus two. We need the x plus two. We need the two. And I know, like, you know, really, do you need the two? You know, it's a factor. We're going to list it. Yeah, it's always positive. It's very easy to figure out. Okay. So it's not like it's a. For not listing the two. Um, I'll ask. And then we've got the x squared minus four squared. And ultimately, that's going to give us a sign for g prime of x, which will then tell us what g of x is doing in that interval. OK, so that's something that's squared. This is a 2. That's negative, right? So those are very easy to figure out. Would you lose marks? I'll check. But just, you know, how hard is it to do? Not very. Uh, 3x plus 2. So uh, what's in that interval? Is it? Well, no, if it were negative 1, I'd get negative 3 plus 2, which would be negative 1. So I think it's negative and then it's positive, right? Because this, this is the critical number for 3x plus 2, right? The negative 2 thirds. So it's 0 here. It's negative and then it's positive. Now, if I'm adding 2 to everything, that's positive throughout. Uh, the square root of x plus 2 is positive everywhere, right? Just the definition of square root is that it's positive. Right. So that's it, right? We have our 17 factors, however well, many factors you've listed, right? And so now we just sort of count signs. Well, we count negative signs, really. Right? So even number of negative signs, uh, odd number of negative signs, Odd number of negative signs. Okay, so there's something happening at two, right? We know what that is. Okay, we got this x squared minus four, and we know that on either side of that, it's decreasing. So g of x is increasing from negative two to negative two thirds. And g of x is decreasing <coughs> from <coughs> negative 2 thirds to 2 and from 2 to infinity. Right? Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Woo! All right, in only 